Another new feature being introduced into version 4.26 of the Unreal Engine is a Cascade to Niagara converter. Saw this on a live stream and figured looking into this could be quite useful. And I have a couple of examples I'll show you how to use this now. Uh, there are some flaws with the system. So I'll also show you how we can fix the two examples I have from Cascade to Niagara. Now this is a plugin, so if you haven't already included this on 4.26, we need to go to edit plugins in the project you want to use it. Search for Cascade to Niagara Converter. This is a plugin to do this conversion. Once you have this enabled, you will need to restart your project and then you'll be ready to go and follow along with what I'm doing here. Very simple steps. The main topic in this video will be the fixing of some things because like I said, uh, there isn't necessarily an exact Cascade to Niagara uh, kind of like for like system in some places, especially when you have multiple emitters in Cascade and things like that, you may need to fix some things up. If you just want to see how to do this, then all we need to do is find the Cascade system you want to convert, right click on that and select convert to Niagara system. That will rename it the same with converted at the end. That is your Niagara system there. I'm just going to do this for the second one as well. And that is pretty much the process done. That is the new plugin in action. Like I said, the rest of this video, I'm just going to show you where some of this doesn't technically work. Hopefully this will be iterated on and refined as we go forward. And I'll also show you what the cascade systems look like. So the end result we're looking to get into Niagara. So this is just a kind of a landing dust effect. Both of these I think came from a game jam entry that I've made. So they're quite simple as they are. And the footstep is just a constant spawning of spheres and we're changing the size over lifetime and adding a little bit of variation side to side for the, uh, the velocity here. So let's see what the converter has done for us in the footstep, first of all. We can see we have an issue here, there's no vertical movement and there doesn't seem to be any size changing either. Now what we can see to the right hand side here, we've got some exclamation marks just telling us that there's not a serious error or anything that will stop this working, but something hasn't been converted properly. We can see here that is the B apply global spawn rate scale. So I'm just going to acknowledge that and get rid of the warning and do that for all of these. Just click on these to make them go away. So that's not going to fix it. That is just so that we don't have to see the updates there. So this is where we're just going to have to come in, see what was happening in this version, what isn't happening in the Niagara version and see how we can fix this. So the first thing I'll look at is the velocity. It seems to be going sideways from what I can see there. So yeah, we're going minus 50 in the X as a minimum and a maximum. So we don't want it to go the same way. We want it to be a minimum of minus 50 and a maximum of 50. So that is at least now providing some movement. I think the Z axis is too small. So some of these values won't, like I said, sync over. So let's maybe actually multiply this. So set this up to 200, maybe a bit big. So maybe just 100. That looks more like the height the previous one was going and maybe a minimum of 50. And in fact, now I think the side movement's too small. So we'll half this. And we can see that at the top there, we are getting the objects scaled down. So we'll just double check the size by uh, the scale mesh by size. Over time, this is being done pretty much as we wanted. I think maybe this curve is going up too high. So if we bring that down, that looks a lot more like the previous version. So that one was quite nice and simple. Just a few changes there. And I would be happy to use that again for my character, maybe with some tweaking. But I think the way that was being used, it was being used quite constantly. And the character was moving around quite quickly, so it's quite hard to notice. So I'm happy to save that one. And we can see how the uh, player land has worked. Okay, so this one looks a bit more problematic. We have, uh, even though I only had one emitter here, we have an empty emitter being provided here. Uh, I can also see this is going vertically. And yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that is not going out in a spherical shape or anything. That is a straight line going up. So we'll get rid of the empty emitter. We're not gonna need that. And we actually have some red warnings here. So this means that something has completely not worked. So we'll just click on that to go and navigate to this. The great thing about this option is we can dismiss it if we're gonna fix it ourselves. If the system thinks it has a way that we can fix this for us, then we can just press fix issue and it will reassign some things over here. So that has made it smaller, but it's still going in the wrong direction. So I think what we want to do, again, we're gonna look at the velocity. I think the axes may be getting mixed up from these two examples. Uh, we can see that isn't working ideally. So this is being moved vertically where we don't want it to do that. So if we put zero on the Z here, and then maybe minus 100 to 100 rather than 10, uh, that is more of the correct direction. And then we have this one going in a shape, I think. We were using a cylinder 
in Cascade. I don't think that works very well for Niagara. I think what we want instead is a cone. So if we press plus here, type cone, and we want to add a velocity in a cone, we can probably reduce the drag as that is looking a bit bunched at the moment before we even wear about the cone. And in fact, maybe we just want some more velocity. So we'll double this again. And then for the cone, we want this to be, I think this is gonna go the wrong way. So we want this on the Z axis as a positive value, zero on the X, give it a cone angle of 360 and a velocity will try 500. Okay, and we could probably play about with that and tweak that a little bit more, but that again would now work as a landing collision kind of impact effect and is looking a little bit closer to what we had here. Uh, maybe we do want some more drag and maybe a higher velocity to get that kind of exaggerated uh, initial explosion and it will kind of taper out. But again, you're not playing with this yourself. Obviously you have different particles. So I'll just leave this as an example of how we can get closer to the end result using our cascade particle systems. Like I said, there were some issues, but they're quite easy to fix up and it still gets a lot of the initial emitter information. We're using the correct textures and uh, meshes where they're applying things like that. All of that is done for us, um, which is super handy. And then we just need to tweak some of the new systems, the velocities, the directions, and some of the things which are lost in translation. So that is how to use the new particle converter. Hopefully that's proven useful. Like I said, there could be some changes and improvements in later versions. Uh, 4.26, as of recording this, is still only in preview, so it may have some improvements coming. But I figured that would be super useful to see uh, if a lot of people are still coming from Cascade trying to work out how to get into Niagara. That could be an interesting way to start this, is just taking some of your existing particle systems and really trying to see how you could work those into Niagara without needing to start completely from scratch. So just wanted to say a really big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon for your continued support of the channel, allowing me to create content like this on a weekly basis. If you wanted to get your hands on the project that I've been using for any of these tutorials, then you can take a look over on the Patreon page and your support over there will get you access to all of the source files that I use in any of the playlists here. If that's not an option, but you still wanted to support the channel, just leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to continue growing and reach as many people as possible. And of course, do consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell to get those updates as soon as any of the weekly videos go live. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.